welcome to like everyone so today we are going to be creating another random abstract art and uh, we'll try to add some interesting things to this or uh, you can create a uh, pretty amazing end is using just a simple object and just extremely deleting some faces so we'll see how we can do that so i'm going to start off by taking a simple platonic and in the attribute editor i'm going to go into the platonic and instead of icosahedron, in the primitive menu, you get tons of options like tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. You can choose anything that you want. You can add subdivision mode from chord, triangle, pi, and caps. And you have subdivision option as well. And radius, I'm going to keep the radius to 2. And spherical inflation, that means keeping the object is spherical or non spherical. So I'm going to choose dodecahedron, you can, you're happy to try different types of primitive to get what kind of result you're going for. I'm going to go with dodecahedron and I'm going to choose maybe caps. Right? And I'm going to keep the subdivision amount to 2. Right? So this looks good. I'm going to turn off the grid for now. Alright, so from here we have something like this, we can go into the hardware. Alright, so I'm gonna go into the face mode here. I'm gonna select one face, double click on the second one holding shift, and then you can simply go to select and click on similar. Now from here, hit Ctrl E. You can also click on this icon, you can go to edit mesh and extrude as well. From here, extrude this inside, hit extrude one more time, extrude this inside, extrude this inside, and simply hit delete. Alright, so from here it doesn't look that good, but if I hit 3 on my keyboard, this looks pretty nice. Right? Just a few things we are going to add up before getting into the whole thing. So instead of hitting 3, we are actually going to add some more subdivision into this mesh. So I'm going to go to select your primitive, go into your mesh, and go to smooth. Make the division to about 2 or maybe 3, depending on what kind of look you are going for. I'm going to add some more subdivision in a procedural way by using on scatter club. But for the original mesh, I think this amount of subdivision is good enough. Since this is an abstract art, uh, we are not limited by the number of polygons. Alright, so the next thing that uh, we have to do is you can randomly select anything that you want, like for example, any edge loop. So, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this one, which is kind of intersecting around the edges of all corners and this way I'll have something like this so I'm going to select this and again you can go to similar but if the similar doesn't work then you can manually select it alright so everything is selected now I'm going to hit ctrl E or you can click on this icon it's true and from here we can simply extrude this down let's do this down one more time and there you go so I'm going to go to object mode Alright, so I think this looks pretty good to me. We are good to go. So I'm gonna take a simple plane now as my backdrop. I'm gonna scale this up. And I'm gonna make the subdivision amount to somewhere about I'm not getting the subdivision here. So it ran into a bit of problem here and subdivision amount to 1 and 1 and let's give this up and from here I'm going to go into the front view select my object and hit X on my keyboard and bring this up so that looks good from here I'm gonna simply before actually editing my background I'm gonna take a simple camera and uh, bring this back from here I'm gonna put this edge to behind further the Z axis and bring this up. Select the edge, go to edit mesh, bevel, and uh, increase the segment, reduce the fraction, and uh, there you go. So we have a nice backdrop now. This looks pretty good. Put three on the keyboard to make it smooth, and let's get into our camera. So I'm going to select my camera by clicking on this icon, and I'm going to increase the transfer by to one and uh, I think maybe yes. So I'm gonna add some rotation on the x axis. Let's zoom in a bit. One more thing I've done is uh, I've taken a preset of 1k square just so it's a square resolution. So 
make sure you do that. And I'm gonna quickly bring this forward towards the camera just so it fills the whole area. And from here, I can just select my camera again and go to create a nice smooth for this. I'm gonna make this like maybe 1.5. Alright, this looks good and simply lock my camera. Alright, so from here we are going to get into the shading. I'm gonna select this, right click new material. I'll call this material a simple BG. So let's select this and uh, let's make it a pretty rough material. I'm gonna hit 26 and I'm gonna make the diffuse roughness to 1 and uh, let's make the color to pretty black. Select your primitive, add new material. And you can name this whatever you want. Go to Hypershade. From here, select your material. Go to Graph Editor. And from here, instead of using this, I'm going to go into my search and search for mix shader. Delete the output surface. Attach this to the surface shader. And since this is our A, I'm going to attach this to the shader 2. And let's take a gold preset for this. Okay, this looks good. Let's take another standard surface. And there you go. Delete the output. It has the output to the shader 1. And uh, we can call this B. And we can take something else or we can simply make this a pretty matte object. I'm going to make the roughness to about 0.6 again. And I'm going to add a bit more code into this. And let's make the roughness of that 0.3 as well. Alright, so this is a pretty matte object now. and White as well, and we can shrink this down by clicking on this button here. Right, so there you go, we have A and B, and I'm gonna take a simple curvature here to add some weathering around the edges. And let's open this up, attach this to the mix. And if you don't know about curvature, I highly suggest watching my earlier video regarding AI curvature. It's a pretty amazing mode that creates edge weathering. And some amazing details, so I had this as watching that before getting into the curvature. Moving on, I'm gonna make the samples to 8 and the radius will be 100, spread to maybe 0.9 and multiply it to somewhere about 5. I think this looks good, and you can see the overall details here. You can reduce the spread if you want, if you want a much thinner lines. I'm gonna keep it to 0.9. And let's close this now and uh, Let's turn on our idea and now we have something like this. And so I'm gonna get into my HDR quickly. And one more thing to keep in mind, I'm using one of my own HDR. Uh, it's from the pack that I've been developing for the three months. It's called HDR Studio Essential Light Kit. And uh, it will be released pretty soon, so I'm using one of the HDR from that pack. You can find tons of free HDRs. On Google as well, if you want. Alright, so this looks really good to me. What I'm gonna do is just to add a bit more cinematic look to this render, I'm gonna take another sphere and let's go to the front view with X on your keyboard and bring this in the middle. Let's hit 3 to make it smooth and apply a new material for the shader, strand surface, and let's take this into preset glass. Alright, so if you have more time playing around with the materials, make sure you turn the opaque off if you're using anything regarding the glass. And now we have a nice reflection going on around here. This looks pretty amazing. Uh, in case you don't have any access to HDR or if you don't want to use any HDR, what you can do is do this. So I have no lighting at all. What else you can do is you can go to the rendering, take a direction light. Scale this up and rotate this. So there you go. Now you have the amazing light as well, and you can use a couple of these lights. Uh, you can hit Control B, duplicate this, and rotate this to get another angle. And make sure you're not using shadow for this one. And actually go into the army. And uh, from here you can turn off the cast shadow option. So if you're using multiple light sources, make sure you cast only one shadow. Use only one shadow and increase some samples for that. Apart from this, if you do want to use this, you can also go for Arnold's Media Light. And bring this to here, hit G on your keyboard and rotate this to about 90 degrees. Things will be great. And uh, then you can simply scale this up. Let's turn this on, we can go to the 
attributes in the exposure line is the six. Maybe like twelve. That's bonus. So I'm gonna make this to about ten. Let's increase some samples here to give amazing look to this and make the resolution to one. And add a bit more sampling to diffuse this bit. So we are using just one light and we are getting pretty amazing result. If you want, you can go for something else. You can take three more lighting as well. You want to give more cinematic look to this. And uh, please play around with this, have fun with this. Uh, this is a completely procedural method of shading this, right? So if you want, you can simply go into the mix shader and you can make a combination of matte black and gold as well. If you want, add a bit more metallic into this, so you can have this kind of look going on. So play around with this, have fun with this, and if you do come up with something like this, share me in on my Instagram. And that's it for today. See you in the next video.